right, we're looking at chapter six, video three. Uh, we have gotten through the revolution. We have won the revolution. We're going to be our own independent country at this point now with a form of government called the Articles of Confederation. First, let's talk about the Treaty of Paris of 1783, the treaty that ended the revolution. Great Britain is going to recognize our independence with the Mississippi River as our western border. Florida is going to go to Spain. We do get some fishing rights off the east coast of Canada, and we do tell the British that we would try to reclaim some money that their merchants um, were owed by colonists. Um, we were going to try to get those debts paid off to them. It bears noting that the French who helped us with the revolution didn't get any territory, and actually they will end up with considerable more debt as a result of helping us, and it's going to have a big impact on their future as they head toward their revolution in another 13 or so years from them. This was a political revolution, certainly, because we're going to set up a new government, which was a very radical idea at the time, and this new form of government was called a republic. In a republic, people elect representatives to go and govern them. Um, this form of government is a very fragile form of government. It doesn't seem to be because it's lasted for as long as it has, but it's a very fragile form of government in contrast to a dictatorship or some other forms of government where they're sort of ruled by an iron fist. Uh, Republic requires people to take an interest in government, to put the good of society overall ahead of individual interests, and so forth, to try to keep it going and make it work. There was no other country at that time that had a republic, so it was a very radical idea for the time. Under the Articles of Confederation, we don't have colonies anymore, we have states, and each state is going to come up with its own constitution. So we had 13 different states with 13 different state constitutions, but they did have certain things in common. Each state constitution called for a governor to be elected and to have limited powers. They called for senators to be elected as well. And each state had some separation of powers. Pretty much every state had a Bill of Rights as well with a variety of protections offered in that Bill of Rights, um, but each state had that. The, the legislature in each state tended to have a considerable amount of power. But under the Articles of Confederation, you have a, a confederate form of government, which is where each state acts basically like its own country. They come together to work out a few things at a national level, but pretty much everything is done state by state. The closest thing I can equate it to today, and it's not the best analogy, but the closest thing I can equate it to today would be like the United Nations. Each country in the world does its own thing, but they come together at the United Nations to try to work out a few things in common. That's how it was with the Articles of Confederation. Um, this government was set up by the Second Continental Congress, and it, the, the spirit of the time was to have as little power and authority at a national level as possible. Having just dealt with the King of England, we wanted to have power and authority as close to the people's hands as we could get it. So there was a Congress, a national Congress, called a Confederation Congress, but it had very little power. For example, it couldn't tax. All right, we were so afraid of a national power taxing us that we didn't give this legislature the power to tax us. There were state taxes, but there was no national tax. And that's going to mean the national government doesn't have any money. Right. There was no executive branch like we have today. There was no president like we have today. There was no national judicial branch, so no Supreme Court, no federal court system like we have today. In the different states, you had an executive as a governor, you had a court system, you had a legislature, but at the national level, you have only that Confederation Congress, really, with any um, presence. And so that meant there was very little unity in the country at that time. 
Now, as far as slavery goes at the end of the revolution, Georgia, at, right as we got independence, Georgia was the only state that was still importing slaves, but South Carolina is going to start again. This is something that we'll see um, uh, have a limited time frame. Um, we're going to be done with importing slaves legally around 1808. Um, slaves who had fought for the British were punished if they had fought for us, for independence. In a number of cases, they were given their freedom. Now, the North pretty much, as a rule, freed their slaves. It was something that did not uh, ever really take strong hold in the North. You didn't have the farms in the North that required a lot of slaves um, or a lot of additional help. Um, and so it had a different history in the North than the South. And the North pretty much will get rid of slavery at this point in time. We also see roughly 55,000 Southerners, Southern slaves, um, flee to the North to try to have their freedom. And as far as women in this new government under the Articles of Confederation, they had experienced a lot of new roles during the war. They had taken over farming. They had taken over family businesses um, and so forth during the Revolution. But now that the Revolution is over, there really wasn't anything given to the women in this new form of government. Now, in 1790, you do see Judith Sargent Murray wrote a um, a work called On the Equality of the Sexes to try to draw attention to how women were being treated, but very little attention was drawn. And we also see Abigail Adams writing a famous letter to John Adams asking John Adams to please include some rights for women in these new governments, and John Adams is not going to do it. Right? Um, this letter is called Remember the Ladies Letter. And John Adams is going to respond with, quote, depend upon it. We know better than to repeal our masculine systems. So there were no rights given to women under the Articles of Confederation.